uncles and aunts, men and women. Mm -hmm. And we have to have compassion for the children who are coming forward. They don't want anything horrible to happen to their family members. The other family members don't necessarily want something awful to happen to the predators in their family. We just wish they wouldn't act out. Mm -hmm. you no, know, why can't you just not act out? Because then the family's put in that awful position of having to tell on them, and then what's gonna happen to them, and then how much time is enough, and how much punishment is enough. When we stand back and walk away from, like step back from the emotion of, these are our children, I mean, you're a mom. Mm -hmm. It's your baby, mm -hmm. you would kill for that child. I mean, that's your, that's, that's, that's our heart. And as a society, do you remember, was it last year when that kennel up north burned down and the state of Maine just rallied and there was truckloads of dog food and cat food and litter and cages and collars and I mean, the people of Maine just really stepped up. But when we talk about child molestation, people just sort of, you know, step back. It is so overwhelming that people don't know what to do. And really what to do is the first thing is if one in four girls and one in six boys are abused and people, I can hear my, my peers in the organization saying, those numbers aren't correct. Well, some people will say it's one in two girls and some people will say it's one in 10 girls. Does it really matter if there's a nuclear radiation poisoning and if it was a 15% leak or a 20% leak or a 5% leak, it's a lot. So if those are the numbers, whatever they are, and you have a large group of, of people from Maine in a room, you say, gosh, let's say that a quarter of them or a half of them have been abused themselves. Have they gotten enough therapy that they're not sort of passing it down? So the first thing is to become aware, making this uh, less stigmatized so people can have a conversation about it so we can create that cultural shift. Or we like, you know, it used to be we couldn't talk about depression, and now it's like, where's my Xanax? Where's my anti-anxiety? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. right, and there was a day that that was like a shameful secret. You know, so-and-so's gone on vacation when really they went to rehab, and now it's like, yeah, going to rehab, you know, they're Facebooking, gone my way to rehab, you know? Right, that cultural shift. So if we can talk about, yes, I was a survivor, I was a victim of this, and getting the therapy and help that you need, and then having conversations with your children. Simple little things like, um, so you bring your child somewhere, <clears throat> and people like, oh my gosh, I mean, your, your son is adorable, right? And so people wanna pick him up and kiss him and hug him, but let's say your son's like, I don't want to. How many times have we seen moms and dads say, oh, that's just Uncle Fred. Here, say hi, right? totally teaching that child that how they feel doesn't matter and their boundaries and that gut feeling they have about, I don't want to, too bad, you have to do it anyway, right? right? right. So instead of that, we say, oh, he doesn't want to hold you today, so how about we high five? How about we knuckle punch? Right. How about we learn a proper handshake? So there's things that we can do at home that we call a vagina vagina and a penis a penis instead of cupcake. There's one child who was trying to disclose to her teacher, talking about cupcake, and the teacher's like, what are you talking about? Because the mom didn't feel comfortable with the body. We're all comfortable with saying a hand is a hand and a foot is a foot. Right. There's no shame or anything you know, about the rest of our body. 